God of love and God of light, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we do pray that through the cross, Jesus would shine upon us today, shine upon us with his forgiveness, shine upon us with his mercy, and indeed, shine his light on us, that we might become vessels of light in a dark world. We thank you for the love that he shed in our hearts through that cross, the love that encourages and guides us each and every day as we stand as your family and worship as your people. We thank you for this chance to be back in your house today. We thank you for the protection you gave us from the harsh winter weather. And we thank you that now it is our opportunity to praise and worship you. Be with us as we study your word, as we consider the state of our congregation. In Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Generally, it's on the second Sunday of the new year that we talk about the state of the congregation. Well, we didn't meet last week, so it got bumped to this week. So today we're going to talk about the state of Prince of Peace. On the insert, on the back of the insert, you'll see my, my uh, usual amount of statistics. My, my, my numbers that I like to play with every year. You'll see that I've left them blank for you to fill in some things there. Let's start with first-time visitors. That's where we usually start. First-time visitors in 2017. How many first-time visitors? You've seen the list there of how they've gone through the years. Bottomed out in 2016 at 32. I hope we had more than that in, in 2017. <coughs> how many first-time visitors? Anybody want to take a guess? How many first-time visitors we had in 2017? 20, that's a good guess, nope. Let's go up a little higher than that. We didn't find them out below 32. 51, 51 first time visitors. So we're back up on first time visitors last year. Can anybody think of the first time, any of the first time visitors who visited us and stuck around a little? Katie, Judy, yeah, we're picking on them this morning and Jan's waving her hands back there too. Jan, there's three of them. Uh, no, Paul was here before that. Paul, Paul was here before 2017. We're glad he's here today. I don't want to <laughs> minimize that. We're glad he's here. But Katie and Judy, and uh, I'm looking forward to bringing them into membership as soon as we get an opportunity to have a confirmation class for them. Uh, and probably Jan too at the same time. So that's all going good. Uh, we've got our first visitor for 2018. I'm going to embarrass him. But but some of you know his name already because he's been in this building before, and that's Mike. Mike there who's sitting behind Dexter keeping his head down. Mike worked on our air conditioners, replaced them over time. Rochelle's written him checks before. Mike, it's good to see you this morning. Hope I'm not embarrassing you too much. Okay, but good to have you with us this morning. So we got one visitor for 2018 so far. Uh, other times means during our Lenten services, during our Advent or Christmas Eve. Uh, how many first-time visitors do you think we had in those services last year? Two. That was that was kind of down, but that, that, that number fluctuates when they come. Two. Anybody know who those two visitors were? The kids that Karen and Larry babysit every day. They came to one of the Lenten oh. services. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember those two kids. Yeah, those two little boys. Yeah, they, that was the only first-time visitor we had there. All right, new members. How many new members did we take in in 2017? Five. We actually took in five. Anybody remember who they were? Dexter. We took in Dexter. We took in Penny. We took in Tiffany. And we took in Zach. Trin uh, Katie's son. Katie Lyon's son, Zach, in the membership. And also Steve Snyder joined us. Steve, Steve Snyder is now an official member of Prince of Peace. And Gail, the next time she comes, will be joining us also at that time. So we had five. How many baptisms did we have last year? Three. Baptisms? Three. Three. Good guesses. Now who were they? And a baby. Judy, Katie, and a baby, as Judy <laughs> says. Judy remembers after she was baptized the same Sunday as the baby. Anybody remember who the baby was? Diane Abrish's daughter, Mackenzie's daughter, McKinley. Mm -hmm. Three baptisms last year. 
Okay, how about average Sunday morning attendance last year? Not 51. 58. 58. Now you'll notice that's a little bit of an increase from 2016. Of course, it's still way down from where we used to be. Now there are reasons why we used to be up higher and what happened and all these things. Anybody have any thoughts on why we might be a little higher on an average, the Sunday's weekend attendance, on, on our weekend attendance in 2017 than in 2016? Aiden? We started Saturday night. Yeah. Saturday night gave a few people uh, who don't come on Sunday mornings a chance to come on Saturday night. And it boosted our attendance just a little. Okay, money. Yeah, I'm reaching into your pockets again. How much was the general fund giving in 2017? Nobody wants to venture a guess on that one. 113,000. As you can tell, that's, uh, you know, you know the problem with that? We spent 117,000. Yeah, we still got to figure out how to make those two things jive a little better so that, you know, we got to keep less strain on Rochelle's heart over here. You know, that. I left a few months blank. I always like to do that in the bottom part where I give you the average per month. Because I like to let you figure out what happened in March last year. March was Easter. Our attendance usually comes up a little Easter. Well, it didn't do too much. 63. 63 in March. What happens in May? Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. That's always usually a, a good one for us. Well, May we hit 63 again. 63. And I put October because what happened in October? Reformation. Reformation. 500th anniversary plus that was the day we brought in the four, four of our new members by confirmation. Penny, Dexter, Tiffany, and Zach, and we had some extra visitors here. I remember that because Zach's grandfather, Bobby's father, uh, showed up here, and we had a number of Catholics in the mix. And what a Sunday to preach to Catholics on Reformation Sunday. I didn't convince Pat yet, but I've been to his church now, unfortunately for his wife's funeral, but uh, Pat liked to have me at his church. I did wear my collar that day. It was fun because all the people kept on calling me father. My father, my father, my father. So I didn't correct them unless we talked a little. But in October, 61. 61. Now I've been asked, why do I share all these numbers with you? I want to give you an idea of what's happening. You can look these numbers over and see that really in the last four years, there hasn't been any significant last four or five years there really hasn't been any significant change we've basically kind of held status quo and the question is will status quo cut it will status quo make us a growing church not really so we've got a little bit of a challenge before us I give you these numbers for your consideration so that you might think of well, maybe we should do something a little different. Maybe we should do something a little bit more. Maybe we can do something to spark more interest in the church. I don't know. Maybe inviting more people. If we had uh, 51 first-time visitors last year, uh, we have about uh, nearly at least 5% who are coming on a regular basis now to Prince of Peace out of those visitors. This is the kind of thing you consider and start looking at. Visitors help us grow the church. Inviting people helps us grow the church. All those kind of things. Well, let's step back from the numbers for a minute. What I want to ask you right now is, is a, a little conversation this morning. I want to ask you, uh, when you hear a word or a concept, what, what you picture, what you think, what comes to your mind. When you think of the, the word pastor, when you think of the word pastor, do you get any images or, or thoughts or, or you know, is it just, huh, gee, I'd like to be a pastor who only works one day a week. Uh, you know, do you, what, what kind of things come to your mind when you hear the word pastor? Pardon me? Comfort, I like that one. Leader. Leader, okay. Mike? Teacher. Teacher. Tom? Shepherd. Shepherd. 
Preacher. Preacher? Some of you just go blank when you hear the word pastor. I don't know if that's good or bad. Okay, we'll work on that one. Let, let's let's uh, change. Let's cla move on a little. What do you think are the duties of a pastor? When you think of a pastor, what are his duties? What duties do you think of when you think of a pastor? Jalen. Teach the Word of God. Any others? Visiting. Pardon me? Visiting. Visiting. Weddings and funerals. Weddings and funerals. Go and see the uh, sick in the hospital. Go to see the sick in the hospital. Aiden. Leave the service. Leave the service. Anything else? <coughs> when I did just, just some things I jotted down. When I think of duties for the pastor. Duties encourage, nourish your faith. Nourish your faith. The, the, the teaching, the preaching, are all to stimulate your spiritual growth. Where in our society are you most likely to grow spiritually? Church. Church. Definitely not schools. Not your nightclubs. <laughs> But in church, we're supposed to talk about the Spirit and growing spiritually, so nourishing your faith. What the other pastor does too? Challenges your conduct. <coughs> Challenges your conduct. Tells you that you're sinning and you're not supposed to. And that means quit it. Stop sinning. Go and sin no more. Nourish your faith. Challenge your conduct. Stimulate your action. Your action. Your witness. What does it mean that you're supposed to witness for Christ? When I show you these numbers and I give you that challenge, I'm stimulating you to think of, well, are there other people I can invite to church? Are there ways I can help my church to grow? Are there ways that I can better show the kingdom of God in my life? Well, how about what I'll call from duties? Let's move the role. We've covered some of these things. What is the role of a pastor? We've heard shepherd, we've heard leader, we've heard teacher. And those are pretty much what I got. Also, I'll say the one healer. And by healer, I mean the one who brings comfort in the crisis situations, in disease and, and sickness and death, the one who helps out there. But what I also want to focus on is coach. Coach. I'm a coach for this church in some ways. The scriptures on the front of the insert from 1 Thessalonians. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with Him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you also are doing. A coach encourages a team. I encourage you. What are the words I use to encourage you? The words of the cross. To focus our attention on what Jesus has done for us. To remind us that our sins are forgiven and that we've been given new life in Him. A new life that's full, meaningful, and exciting. I want to be that which encourages you. And what I want to suggest to us this year is that we work on encouraging one another. Our our motto for the year is turn tragedy into triumph. Turn tragedy into triumph. But our goal for this year is to learn to be encouragers. To learn to be more encouraging in all aspects. And to illustrate this, I've got, of course, two hockey stories. What would we be if we didn't have hockey stories, right? <laughs> two teams, advanced and bronze. The, 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 the team where they play full out and the team where we're just learning. I've become captain of both teams. Because last season in my advanced team, we went into the championship game. We were playing against the team that had dominated us throughout the season. We were, they were first and we were second. We've been fighting all year, but we were second place team. We were going against the first place team. When we played them three games in the season, they beat us, usually by a margin of ten goals. They beat us pretty bad. Well, I stood up in the locker room before that game. And I said, guys, I'm demanding old man privilege. 
as the oldest one on this team, you're going to listen to me. Now, the funny thing about it, and I don't, can't go into detail, is these are the same guys that two seasons ago kicked me off the team. Now they're on my team. they got to listen to me. Old man privilege. And I said, guys, we can go out. We can beat this team. I don't care what the previous scores were. This is the game that counts. This is the championship. We can beat this team if we play like a team. If we pass that puck, if we guard the defensive men when they're in the offensive zone, we will beat this team. We went out and we played one very, very hard game. With one minute left, the score was 3-2 to two in our favor. They pulled their goalie, we put an empty netter in. Nobody thought we were going to beat that team. We fought, they never had the lead. We had the lead throughout that game, 1-4-2. It was a hard fought game. We did just what we said. I yelled at those guys from the bench. I coached more than played in that game, but we won it. Now my bronze team, it's a different story. We, we play players who are learning the game. And we've got this girl on my bronze team named Lily. Lily's a student at the University of Memphis, but for some reason I can't make Lily understand what offsides is in hockey. <laughs> Lily loves the game. She's, she's a small woman, she's a small girl. Her mother usually comes with her to the game. I, I mean, I like Lily, her mother's very, her mother's, don't cross her mother. Don't do I, I, No, no, I'm not gonna cross her mother. I think I'd be in trouble. We had one game during the season where we were tied up at the end of regulation time. And in our league rules, you go into a shootout, which means three players from their team and three players from our team are going to shoot. We, we were home team, we chose to shoot last. So they had one player go and shoot, didn't score. We had one player go and shoot, didn't score. They had their next player get up and shoot, didn't score. And I turned to my team, I said, I don't care what you think. I said, Lily's next. I, I didn't really think Lily had a chance of scoring, and she didn't score. But boy, did that make a hit with her, that she got to go out and give it a try. And boy, was her mother appreciative. I'm on her mother's good side. <laughs> I encouraged her to give it a try. And all the guys on the team, most of them afterwards, did say, yep, you did the right thing, to give her a try. It's not whether you can necessarily win the game. It's not necessarily whether you're going to put the puck in the net. But I want to encourage you all to try. To get out there and take that shot. To get out there and do what you can do. Why? Because Christ has done for you what you couldn't do. He has won your salvation through the cross. He's forgiven your sins. He's filled you with His Holy Spirit and made you new and giving you a life where you get to praise and glorify Him. And now the challenge is, the coach is saying, team, let's go out and win one for God. Let's go out and show others what it means to be His people and live in His kingdom. Anybody familiar with John C. Maxwell? Anybody heard of him? Jan has back there. Uh, John C. Maxwell was a pastor of a fairly large church in California, but he's written a lot on leadership. And uh, I came across this, I don't know how long ago, uh, a daily reader, the little devotions from, from Maxwell, basically on leadership. And this one was from Friday, from the 19th, and it really, I think, makes a lot of sense today. It's called The 30-Second Rule. The 30-Second Rule, and here's what Maxwell writes. When most people meet others, they search for ways to make themselves look good. The key to the 30-second rule is reversing this practice. When you make contact with people, instead of focusing on yourself, search for ways to make them look good. Every day before I meet with people, I pause to think about something encouraging I can tell them. What I say, what I say can be one of many things. I might thank them for something they've done for me or for a friend. I might tell others about their accomplishments. I might praise them for a personal quality they exhibit. Or I might simply compliment their appearance. The practice isn't complicated, but it does take some time, effort, and discipline. The reward for practicing it is huge because it really makes a positive impact on people. 
I put a quote at the bottom of the front of your insert. I try to put a quote each week. And that quote is from the 30 second rule which says, take 30 seconds with each person you meet today to add value to them. Take 30 seconds with each person you meet today to add value to them. Instead of trying to make yourself look good, try to make someone else look good. And that's what I want to encourage you to do this year, is to try to encourage other people. Try to make other people feel good about themselves because of what Christ has done for them. Because as Christ has saved you, He's offering His saving love to them also. So let's learn to be encouragers. To encourage one another in this building. To encourage one another outside this building. To encourage people because of God and how He encourages us. The prayer for the week printed on the insert of course follows this theme. And I invite you to join with me as we say these words together. God who upholds and God who uplifts Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may it truly be my pleasure to turn to you this day in prayer and worship. I thank you for the salvation that upholds my life and makes me a child of your kingdom. I thank you for the gift of your presence in the form of the Holy Spirit, who uplifts my spirit with your love and forgiveness. I pray that I will learn to become an encourager. May I always speak to God that encourage people to love more and help others to see you more clearly. I pray in Him who upholds your kingdom and uplifts your name, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the gospel of the Spirit be with you all. Amen.